So in this case, I'm going to show, share with you a T2 weighted image, a 55 year old female and, uh, and T1. So let's see the T2 weighted image. So a lot going on in the pancreas here. And it may be of some utility to look at some other organs in this instance, particularly the kidneys and maybe adrenal glands as well. I'll give you the T1 weighted images. So no real hyper intense, T1 hyper intense content in some of the stuff that we're looking at. Then the post contrast sequences through the pancreas, a little bit of motion here, apologize for that. But again, look at the other organs as well. A lot of stuff going on in the other, some of the other organs. This is less motion here, so this may be easier for you to look at. Pancreas looks certainly very interesting, but some of the other organs do as well. Okay, let's pose our last question for the hour. So in this instance, I'm really asking the group to um, come up with a diagnosis of what they think this patient has. And based on that, asking you to maybe take it a step further. What's the most common CNS tumor seen in the, in the disease that this patient has? Is it a hemangioblastoma? Is it a neurofibroma? Is it a GBM? or subependable giant cell astrocytoma, known as SEGA tumors, I believe. I'm certainly no neurologist, so if there's a neurologist out there on the call, um, you know, you feel free to educate me a little bit if I'm incorrect about any of these things. Yeah, so hemangioblastoma, so it was the most, uh, it was the correct answer which most people get. So what am I showing you here? So you're seeing a pancreas that is, you know, replaced by numerous, numerous cysts. And when you see that appearance, you've got to think of von Hippel-Lindau disease. Now, it's a rare disease. We see it uh, um, in a select few uh, patients. It is hereditary, autosomal dominant, and it affects multiple organs resulting in multiple neoplasms. Now, in the pancreas, you're going to see a bunch of cysts. Now, these, unlike other um, you know, cysts in the pancreas, tend to be true epithelial cysts, so with an epithelial lining, true cysts in the pancreas. You also see serious cyst adenomas. We know what that looks like now, and it's, you know, it's very tough to know if if some of these are true cysts or some of this could represent a serious cyst adenoma, but luckily true cysts and serious cyst adenomas are benign, so we don't worry about them. But the one thing you can see in these patients are neuroendocrine tumors as well. And so you need to be on the lookout, particularly in your post-contrast sequences to make sure you're not dealing with any neuroendocrine tumors, because of course, those are something that we need to worry about. But besides that, you see uh, disease in other organs and the kidneys here, he, she, this patient has had partial nephrectomies, but you can see there's multiple renal neoplasm, which is characteristic of uh, von Hippel-Lindau, multiple bilateral renal neoplasms, that is. You can see a, a pheochromocytoma, which is another finding you can see in uh, patients with uh, von Hippel-Lindau. In the epididymis in male patients, you can see cysts or papillary cystadenomas. In the head and neck region, you can see endolymphatic sac tumors. And in the CNS, uh, hemangioblastomas, they can happen in the cerebellum brainstem. But one area that I always look for is in the spinal cord. So you may end up getting cases where, you know, you're reading the abdomen, Look at the spinal cord and you may just see a, you know, a little focus of enhancement. If you do see that, um, that's probably going to be a hemangioblastoma. Now, a lot of these patients end up getting dedicated thoracic spine, lumbar spine MR, so you don't necessarily need to make that diagnosis. But, you know, if you have a de novo case, um, you know, it's good to know where, you know, look at the kidneys, adrenal glands, pancreas, but if you really want to take it to that next level, sort of completing your understanding of the disease and adding value, you know, look at the spinal cord to see if you see any tiny hemangioblastomas as well. They can also get choroid plexus papillomas um, in the CNS, uh, under the CNS category. So this is a patient with, uh, with von Hippel-Lindau who gets followed uh, regularly with us to make sure that things are under control and that these neoplasms aren't below.